Well, hello and welcome to our reading of the um, Theocritus. We're having a look at Idol 1, and we got up to line 15 last time. And so, Thursus and this unnamed goat herd have met, and Thursus asks the goat herd, do you want to play the pipe um, beside the tamarisk trees? And the Ipolis replies here, U themis. It is not themis. It is not lawful. It's not allowed. Themis is to do with divine law. It is not themis. It's not allowed, O shepherd. And it gets repeated again, U themis. It is not lawful. Amen for Hamin, for us, Surisden, for Surisdain, to play the pipe to Mesambrinon at mid midday or noonday. And explains why. Ton uh, Pana de Doika mes. So de Doika, perfect in form, present in meaning. So we fear Pan. Ega ap Agras. Tanika Kekmakos Ampoetai. Uh, a is that in for indeed he um, for Anna he rests up agras from the hunt so he takes his rest from the hunt Tanika at that time Kekmarkos exhausted this is a perfect participle from Camno I think here and you just get the zero grade of the verb and then you've got this form of the um, perfect participle here. Esti de picros. Well, literally he is bitter, perhaps quick-tempered, and uh, grim, dramea cola, grim anger, continually, cathetai sits, poti rini, on his nose, hoi for him. So, um, grim anger, continually sits on his nose. This is a colloquial expression. Various emotions are said to sit upon the nose. Now in the next little section from 19 to 26, the goat herd then suggests that Thursus should sing. So you can't play the pipe at midday because Pan will get upset, but Pan apparently doesn't mind singing at this time. So. In particular, he wants him to sing this song, The Sufferings of Daphnis. Now, the fact that this song is, name, is mentioned by name, as though it were well known, lends strength to the argument that the elements of the tradition are well known and are actually contained in the later recital. Much has been written about the song itself as to what, how much you can assume and what story is behind it. The traditional uh, story, or one of the traditional stories, is that Daphnis was loved by a nymph and that he had promised to be faithful to her alone. But he was, however, seduced by a beautiful princess and as punishment he was blinded. In some accounts he fell from a cliff to his death. It may in fact be the case here, simply that Daphnis had sworn an oath of celibacy and that although the nymph desires him he will remain steadfast and since he can do nothing else he simply dies his death is mysterious as we'll see later so the rustics now move under the elm tree of priapus now priapus is the son of dionysus and aphrodite and Priapus is a god of fecundity. You see pictures of him. He always has large phallus. He's a sort of a god of sex. Um, so they move opposite this elm tree of Priapus, which is very important that it is Priapus, I think, because this is great ten tension of, of um, sexual desire that goes on in this poem. And his presence becomes rather poignant later in the song when he appears himself. 
The pastoral surrounding acts as a kind of aid to the mental picture one creates during the recital of the poem. The stage is set for the poem, but Theocritus, quite unexpectedly, is going to digress to add yet another layer to the poem. And we'll have a look at that as we go. So he says, um, it's not lawful to play the pipe, but he says, A la tu garde, Thirsi, but for you indeed, Thersus, you are singing, literally. So it's almost you know how to sing, or you can sing, Ta algia Daphnidos, of the woes of Daphnus. Now the hic uh, eo is the, it would be hic who this contracts, this is second person, middle aorist from hic naomai. You have come, epitopleon, this is a idiomatic, but literally to uh, the, the furthest stage of the bucolic muse, so a pastoral song. So it's something like you have, um, you sing this of the woes of Daphnis and you have, have reached mastery, you've come to the highest point, you have reached mastery of bucolic, of the bucolic muse, that is bucolic song. So come has domitha, auditory subjunctive, let us sit under the elm tree, the one of Priapus, um, and we get tekai, and um, opposite, cat enantion, in front of, or perhaps in front of, opposite, this is genitive here, tan cranidone, the the um, the springs. Now, interestingly, in his commentary, Hunter reads craniadone with a capital kappa, and writes the st the statues of the spring nymphs. But this is the manuscript reading, and that's what we'll read here. Um, Harper at the place where is Hothokos, the seat, this one, the shepherd's seat, so this rustic seat, so the place where is this rustic seat, Kai Hai Druez and the oak trees. A de Ke now he's going to now offer him something if you do this singing. And so um, he, he says, if you might sing, subjunctive, this is, this is from Aedo, if you might sing as once, Aesas, the, this is the aorist second person singular from Aedo again, from singing. Uh, so if you might sing as once you sang, Aristone, um, uh, the, 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 this is engaging in a, 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 a um, competition, so competing against against Chromis, the guy from Libya. So if you might sing as once you sang in contest against Chromis, the Libyan, uh, Doso, I will give to you Iga, a goat, Didumatokon, which is born twins. You can see the didyma there and the tok root from Tikto. Having born twins, I'll, I will give this goat to you, um, a milk sigh from a male goat, a milk, s tris, well probably up to three times. So perhaps just three times, but s I think has the sense of um, as many as three times. Uh, the goat which Ekois for Ekusa, it's a she goat, so this is a feminine participle, which, although she has two kids, this is os for us, this is the accusative plural, second declension. So although she has two kids, pot for pros amelgatai as duopelas. 
she gives milk in addition to the cross there as many as two pelas, as many as two pails. So the point being is that she's very productive in terms of milk. She can feed her two kids and give two pails of milk, give up to two pails of milk in addition. Now the next section is he's going, he offers her this this goat and now we get this amazing section which is an example of an ekphrasis. It is a very detailed description of a very beautiful object, this um, kisubion, this cup. It's modelled on the shield of Achilles in that um, chapter in that book of Homer we also get references we get this story this long uh, description of the shield of Achilles another ekphrasis only this time this cup is going to be to show the three ages of man and it's modeled on the shield of Achilles except now of course war is replaced with peace so um, now this um, this amazing, remarkable inlaid cup has three scenes. The, the first scene is of two men with a woman in between and they are desirous of her attention but she with fickle mood turns to one and then the other. The next scene is uh, shows an old man, an old fisherman, who's fishing from a rock and his strength and hard labour are emphasised. And the last scene is that of a boy and two foxes. So we have these three ages of man, the boy who cares nothing as we'll see, doesn't care much for what he's doing, he's busy um, making a, a a, a locust cage and ignoring what's going on around him. We then get the scene of the two men who are vying for the attention of a woman and they're doing this in Etosian in vain. And finally we get the old man for whom life is difficult. He has to, he's still strong but he is an old man and he has to work hard. So this is quite a remarkable Piece, which uh, we'll, go, we'll make a start on now. We might not finish it in this particular section. So these, he says, I will give you this uh, this goat, and understand, I will give you also a bathu kisubion, a deep cup. Keklus menon. Um, this is probably a technical word for sealing the wood to protect it from the wine. And uh, the word literally means washed. So it's it's washed with sweet wax. Hardei for heyday with sweet wax. Ampho is two-handled. Neotukes, newly made. Still potosdone. This is um, the, the smelling. It's still smelling from the the plane, perhaps from the carving knife. Glufo is to carve. Um, and potty for pros and goes with kale. So along the lips, toe for two of it. Ivy may ruetai this is for may with a this is ma ruetai for may ruetai with an eta as to to weave so ivy weaves hoops are thin well probably hoops are thin probably from the top down um along um, or towards the lip so starting from the lip uh, of the cup ivy weaves um, hoops are then from the top. Ivy, and we get it repeated here and, and explained a bit more, it's ivy kekonimenos. This is from a verb konizdain 
and it means to interweave. So it's ivy interwoven with helichrys. Helichrys is a beautiful uh, yellow flower, of course. Um, it's literally winding with gold. Uh, so it's um, ivy intertwined with helichrys. And you can find in Gao's commentary, he draws a little picture of what he thinks this might be talking about. Hard to cut out on carpo helix helaetai, agelomena coquienti. And um, now the heart goes with the helix. The, this is a tendril, a winding thing. Uh, so um, we have the the tendril, helaetai, is woven or um, winds down I should say so the tendril winds winds down cat out on probably something like along it um, uh, agelomena priding itself rejoicing in priding itself glorying in uh, it's the carpo goes with the cocienta with its yellow fruit. Entostin de Guna. And inside there is, sorry, well, it is in between or within the cup. Um, guna tetuktai. This is from Chuko. So a woman is has been fashioned a certain didalma. A didalma, maybe you recalls Daedalus, a work of art of the gods. It's um, it's a thing which the gods might fashion. A didalma is an, some amazing thing that's constructed often in Homer. It's what things that uh, Hephaestus makes. So a certain um, work of art of the gods. A scatter adorned, the verb is ascio, but this is just an adjective here, adorned with a robe, uh, chi ampux, and ampux is um, a thing that goes around your head, a, um, what do you call a, um, so with, with, uh, adorned with a robe and a headband, that's what I was, word I was looking for, an ampux. Uh, para hoi beside her now that hoi doesn't go with the andres I think it's with para and it's hoi for uh, out there and beside her uh, men e theradzontes this is a verb e therazdo is to wear one's hair long it only occurs here so men with with and kalon is adverbial here. Uh, so uh, w wearing their hair long beautifully. So with beautiful long hair. Um, now we get alos, each one. Uh, so they vie with words. They argue with words. Each one, amoidos uh, alothin. Um, from one side uh, so the um, uh, yeah, all, it's the idea is alternating so from either side one from one side one from the other alternating they um, they quarrel with words but uh, the words ta, agreeing with the epos here, words which do not touch her mind. So she couldn't care less about what they're doing. Um, Allah, but now we get oka and aloka. So it's at one time smiling or gelao, perhaps laughing or smiling. Potty Durkatai, 
the pros Durkheimai, she looks at this man, and at another time, moreover, literally she hurls her mind, so she turns her attention, potty ton, with to say to the other one. They, uh, Deitha, for a long time, Kuloi Diontes, this is a very funny verb here, it literally means with hollow eyes. Uh, Hunter thinks it means something like with bags under their eyes from lack of sleep, but we'll translate it with hollow eyes. So they for a long time with hollow eyes, hoop erotos under the effect of love, mock the zonti, they labour etosia in vain. And I'll stop at that point and we'll come back and finish the ekphrasis in a later video.